Welcome to this Tyrannus video. In this video, we're going to actually fit a six position switch into the radio. And that six position switch can either be used to have six specific positions for flaps, or it can also be used to do things like pick up the six flight modes of a flight controller like an APM or a Pixhawk. Common places for actually positioning this on the radio include actually putting it in the position where the neck strap normally connects to or onto one of these shoulder areas. Now I've actually been playing with this and just seeing which feels more natural and I thought I'd want it over here because that means I can retain control of the elevator and aileron but actually having it over here with the way the antennas are actually works better so I'm going to pop it in here. So in this video what we're going to do is first of all is we're going to show you how to get into the case. We're going to talk about some safety. Uh, we're going to then actually disconnect the two halves of the radio and we're going to actually make a hole for this switch to go into. Then we're going to install the switch um, in the radio. We're going to do a little bit of soldering. I'm actually going to use this soldering iron. Uh, this is something that I've had for uh, quite a few weeks and been using and really impressed. It's actually a wireless soldering iron and for little jobs like this where you are trying to have very smart little points of uh, solder, this is a really cute way of doing it. So we'll solder it up with that, then once we've done it we'll enable it in the menus actually within the radio. And then finally we'll actually show you how to make it so that that six position switch matches to the Pixhawk and APM flight modes. So each one of the six positions on the switch itself will pop you into another flight mode. So that's the last thing we'll do before we finish. First thing we'll talk about then is we're going to talk a little bit about safety. Uh, first thing is how we're going to get in the radio. Absolutely take your battery out when you're doing this. If you're going to be doing wiring or wandering around inside the case with anything as dangerous as a soldering iron, then make sure that your battery is free and clear. To actually take the back of the case off is relatively straightforward. There are six of these screws. They're about an inch long. Uh, they're classic screws that, you, that bite into the plastic. And all you need to take those out is a normal Phillips screwdriver with a reasonably long reach. There are two at the bottom, two on the shoulders and two at the very top. If you also then undo the little screws on these two shoulder switches here and um, something like a little pair of pliers will just nip them and you can just undo them. Just be very careful that you don't put too far down otherwise you'll uh, gouge the plastic. Once you've done that then the entire radio will open up like a clamshell. And once it opens up, there's only two little things inside that's actually holding it all together. And that is the two ribbon cables. Now we can undo the ribbon cables. That's probably a really good idea here because we're going to be drilling and messing around um, inside the case. And uh, we just want to put this somewhere safe. To take the ribbon cables out is very straightforward. All you do is just get your fingernails along these grey bits of plastic and pull them out and that then releases the cable. If we do that on both sides, then now we can put the front of the radio somewhere nice and safe out the way of any dust we're gonna create while we're cutting it up. And now we have the back part of the radio that we can decide where we want to install the switch. Now, if you actually look at how the radio is put together, there isn't a massive amount of space in here, and one of the common places that it tends to get put is where I'm thinking of putting it, which is right here on the shoulder, just above where the support for the handle is. So I'm going to make a hole right in the middle, in line with the back of the handle and I'm going to open that up to about 5.5 millimeters and then I'm going to use needle files to very gently open it up so the switch becomes a really nice firm fit. The actual thread on the switch itself, there we go, actually has a couple of flat spots so if we can make it so it'll fit in there that'll work. I'm also going to have to cut out a little bit of the plastic for these supports, if you see that really well in the video, um, 
which are there that actually support the back because it'll have to kind of go where those are right now um, and we want to make sure that it fits as far back as we can get it because the front part of the radio that sits here actually has all of the switches and they um, come back a little bit so we kind of want it out the way. So let me go and just start doing the drilling and I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's in position. So after a little bit of uh, drilling and filing we have the switch fitted so here it is in position um, held in place by a um, bolt on top of the washer and as you can see inside when the camera focuses I put it at a slightly oblique angle, it just seems to fit in between the two veins slightly that I had to kind of whittle away and the wires um, go ground at the top, the signal in the middle and the VCC at the bottom. Now I'm just using a, a servo cable here to wire it up, I've already popped the three wires onto it before I installed it for simplicity. Where it's going to install in the radio is into these three pins here. So I'm going to feed this around the back and put them on. Now the pins here, actually the top is ground, the middle is flap and the bottom is VCC. So I'm going to just um, get the wires stripped back and we're going to wire it very carefully into these three positions. So just quick wiring diagram. So here we have the switch on the right hand side. Looking at the back of the switch with the switch rotating knob at the top. Top is ground closest to the top of the switch, flap is the middle, VCC is the bottom and the three connectors at the circuit board again is ground at the top, the signal or flap in the middle and VCC at the bottom. So we just have to connect up one to the other and then we can start putting the radio back together. Let me just quickly strip the ends off and I'm going to solder the wires up onto these three points here and then we'll come back and have a look at what that looks like. So there we have it all soldered in. So we have the wires going from the switch uh, underneath the aerial. I've twisted them around just like all the others inside the radio so that they don't give out any, too much interference and solder them onto those three connectors. And again, just for those who are interested, um, this is the little thing <laughs> I've used for this. God. Wow, it's easier with this than using um, all the cables and other bits of bobs. Um, if you're interested, I'll put a link in the description. It's quite cute. It actually comes with a couple of tips as well. It has this one for kind of fine work, which is what I've been using, and uh, a bigger one, which is useful for more things like power connectors. Um, it takes three or four hours to charge, but out of that, you'll probably get 150 um, odd joints out of it before you need to do anything else. And you just um, plug it into a little charging cable which is where it lives and um, it kind of just charges while you're waiting to use it next time so you know if you're interested in getting a soldering iron for these kind of jobs or just to have one that you can keep in the kit that um, you can drag out when you're in the field and need a bit of soldering this is quite a nice idea and um, has a lock so that when it's in the lock position it can't actually be pressed and it also has a light underneath so when it is live just turn that switch around so it's not locked. As well as heating up the tip, it also actually shines a light on the piece of work as well. So uh, yeah, I'll put a link in the description, uh, worthwhile having a look at. The only thing is it's only 110 volts, so uh, great for our uh, friends in the USA. If you're in the UK, you'll have to get yourself one of these things from somewhere like eBay or Amazon. They're only um, seven or eight quid, but it drops the mains voltage in the UK down to 110 volts that this likes to charge. Okay, so enough about that. Let's put the radio back together. Uh, just dry fit it, make sure that you everything is recessed, nip everything up, make sure you have all the little bits of plastic out of the back, any little shavings, you don't want them rattling around inside your radio. And uh, then when it's all back together, we can then program it and tell it that it has a brand new switch. So to set it up, first thing we need to do is tell the radio that it has a new switch. So we press and hold menu, tab down into hardware, make sure that S3 is set to multi-position switch, then go um, out of that, press it again and go into calibration. Once you're in calibration, make sure that all the sliders are in the middle position, not to be reasonably quick this, and make sure that the, the switch is all the way in one position, either all the way clockwise or all the way anti-clockwise. Hit enter, 
centre sticks and sliders, make sure they all are. With the exception of that switch, make sure it's all the way anti-clockwise or clockwise. Hit enter, move the sticks and pots. Need to be reasonably quick with this. Get the corners, hit the sliders a couple of times. All we're doing is we're just teaching the radio. And the last thing we want to do is gently move the switch one click at a time and watch the screen. So position one, two, three, four, five, six. Enter when done. So we've come out of that. Then if we go into the screen just to see what all the um, monitors are doing, there's channel five. And now you can see that as I move the switch, it goes from minus 100 to minus 60, minus 20, plus 20, plus 60, and plus 100. So there is my switch, my six position switch, giving me those six positions. So let's get these six positions working in six flight modes with an APM or Pixhawk. Netbook time. So here we are on the computer in Mission Planner and I'm in initial setup and looking at the flight modes and normally you'd expect that you'd only get three, you'd probably get one, four and six. But um, I'll let me insert a picture of the radio. So here we are looking at the top with the switch and what I'm going to do is move the switch through each of the six positions. So there's mode one, mode two, mode three, mode four, mode five, and mode six. So now we have all of the positions available through this rotating knob. Now, what we've done to actually make this work is use something called a curve, because unfortunately the normal spacing of the six position switch won't work very well for us. So let's come off the computer, couple of slides, and we'll actually talk about what we've done, and then I'll show you the curve that you need to put in to assign to S3 for it to work exactly like this. So here's the slide showing what we're actually starting with. So here's our six position switches, uh, positions one, two, three, four, five, six at the bottom, and what those switch positions correspond to normally in terms of pulse width modulation value or PWM value. If we assume that the lowest position is 1,000, the highest position is 2,000, then we're getting uh, increments of about 200 every time we move that switch. And that's fine. The challenge is, is that if we actually add the different modes for the APM and Pixhawk over the top, this is how they map on. So you can see that unfortunately, they don't map on perfectly. So if we kind of just flick through, you can see that in position one, it's great, it turns on mode one. We click it to position two, it's still in the mode one range, so it's still gonna be mode one. Position three is gonna give us mode three, so we skip mode two altogether. Mode four, is going to be turned on by switch position four. Good, that's good. Fifth position on the switch though is going to take us into mode six as will the top position as well. So that's not going to work great. What we actually want is for each of those switch positions to give us a value that's pretty much bang in the middle of all of those mode pulse width modulation ranges in Mission Planner. To do that, we're going to have to edit each of the pieces slightly. So if we make a curve that goes minus 90, minus 40, minus 20, 10, 40, 80, and don't ask me how I figured this out, I actually ended up sat with a uh, ruler, a pencil, and actually kind of used a scale to figure out all this. I tried Microsoft Excel and I couldn't get my head around it, but this is what we need to do. So those are the magic numbers for the curve. So let's go on to the radio and I'll show you how to program that in and then assign it to the S3 switch so it works in exactly the same way as we've just seen on the netbook. So to create that curve and map it onto the S3 switch, what we need to do is first of all go into the curves menu for the model. Um, and then we need to create a curve that looks something like this. So if I just edit that curve, so we have um, a curve name of modes. It's a standard type curve. We've selected a six point curve. That means that each of the points corresponds to one of the six positions available on the rotating switch for S3. And then what we've done is we've actually put the numbers in as we've had it on the screen. So minus 90, minus 40, minus 20, 
10, 40, and I've actually put 60 uh, as I've been playing with this, although anything over 60% will give you a high enough range to drop it into the final mode on an APM or Pixhawk. Once you've done that, and you've saved it, the curve should look something like that. Then what you do is go back into your inputs, and normally, where you would assign no kind of curve at all, what we've done is we've told it that the curve we want is a custom curve and to use custom curve one, which is the one that we've just set up. And there is our value. And actually, as you move the switch on the shoulder, you can actually see it change. Now, the really nice thing about this is that if we come out of here and go back up to the servo channel, if I go down and select channel 5, which is our modes, you actually see the pulse width modulation value here at the top. So as I rotate my switch, you can see it changing. So there's my high value, 1800. The next value down is 1700, then 1550, then 1400, then 1300, then 1040 as the lowest one. So that's a nice cute way if you just want to make sure that your values are looking about right just go back and have a look at the pulse width modulation values that are shown clearly on the APM screen and then you can just come in and use the servo menus to just see exactly what the radio is going to pump out. So hopefully that helps those of you that are looking to install a six position switch and the majority of people that are putting a six position switch on a radio for multicopters are going to be having it there because what they actually want to do is they want to run a APM or Pixhawk flight controller and use all six of the modes. So what we've done in this video, we've installed it, we've configured it, we've wired it in, we've set it up on the radio and calibrated it and then we've used this little trick with a curve to actually set it up for APM and Pixhawk. There are lots of other ways that you could use to actually make sure that that S3 switch on the shoulder corresponded to each of the flight modes on your flight controller in turn. I find this curve is the simplest way to do it, otherwise you're having to set up numerous different logical switches and settings to try and match those pulse width modulation values, whereas with a curve you do it once and it's dead easy. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.